On Remembrance Day, someone has left a bouquet of flowers on Lancaster's War Memorial. They have also left a note which reads, In memory of Trooper Kenneth Scott, killed in action in Italy, September 1944. The Italian campaign has generally received less attention than other fronts of the European theatre, even though the Western Allies suffered more casualties here than in North Africa or France. The Allies had believed that opening a front in Southern Europe would shorten the war by making Italy surrender, securing control of the Mediterranean, and forcing Hitler to transfer troops from Russia. The Americans insisted that invading France should be their main priority, but since this could not be launched until 1944, they agreed to a limited campaign in Italy. On the 9th of July, 1943, the Allies invaded Sicily and captured the island after over a month of fierce fighting. Even before Sicily fell, Mussolini was deposed and replaced by a new government who began making secret negotiations with the Allies. But Hitler had foreseen this possibility and once Mussolini was overthrown he began moving German forces into the peninsula. When Italy surrendered in September 1943 the Wehrmacht seized control of the country and neutralized the Italian army to resist the upcoming Allied invasion. On the 3rd of September, the British 8th Army landed in the south of the peninsula and on the 9th, American and British troops of the US 5th Army landed at Salerno. Well, after North Africa, it was the invasion of Salerno. Mm -hmm and into Italy. May was the finishing Tunisia and September was the invasion of Salerno. Mm -hmm. That was landing on the beach just below Naples. When the, when the tank, when the LST landed at Salerno and the beach went out, they probably, probably weren't outside, but somebody was bellowing, off you go, well, you know, uh, go, 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 well my carrier was the leading one. It wasn't put as the leading one, it was just happened to be the leading one because they were in front. Another vehicle had to get round me if they wanted to be the leading one, so mine was the leading one. And it, there was nothing brave about it. <laughs> but uh, I drove out straight onto the ramp, a little bit of water and see, because we'd take our exhaust and from the exhaust at the end we put a collar on and then the piping up like that. It stuck out like that for, in case the tide was in and it, and it was going to be a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. But as look at it, it didn't come up just above the track mm -hmm. level. And then of course we went straight in London, loaded uh, around the back of a hillside, mounted the mortars and dropped a few bombs on the enemy. And the Germans hadn't noticed that we were landing at the beach, but it soon got wind of it and they were coming towards the beach. And if we hadn't been prepared and ready, that could have been the Dunkirk. We mounted two mortars. There's, there's one on Baggy's camera and there's one on uh, Carrie and there's one on mine. Yeah. And when it set fire and I dropped a bomb down the barrel and somebody would be doing it on number two and there's several bombs going over, mm -hmm. dropping on the Germans. Mm -hmm. if, we, if I fired half a dozen, he fired that, that's 12 mm -hmm. bombs dropped on. And it was, <laughs> that was terrific. Well, our anti-tank had mounted the gun, a six pounder gun, anti-tank, and they, they were quite useful. And the Germans must have sent a light tank forward because the uh, monster, they were the tiger tanks hadn't got there. Mm -hmm. And this light, light tank was a 
faster tank and that, that led the infantry and it started to come through the defile while the anti-tank company put it out of action. Well, it blocked the alleyway so the tanker tank couldn't get through. So they were stuck, they had to come on And so them. as the Germans dismounted to come dashing forward to, to either attack the, uh, the troops that were not, the British troops that were there, or not, we got the orders to fire. So we started firing and dropping them all along the Germans. And when we, after that, when, when, when the Germans retreated and we come down, I got in the carry and went back. There was only one route and that was through there. And we could see the number of dead, so we, we didn't do a bad job. How long did the Salerno invasion last? Did it last a couple of days? No, no, no. no. It was all over in a few hours. Right. Uh, on Green Beach, I don't know about the rest of the beach, I don't know about the American beach or uh, any, any other beaches, because I think they landed at three or four beaches. It's similar to D-Day, but on a smaller scale. Heavy German counter-attacks on the Salerno beachhead nearly turned the invasion into a disaster, but the Allied forces managed to hold on to their positions. On the 18th of September, the Wehrmacht withdrew most of its units further north to the defensive positions that they had prepared. The Italian landscape, with its steep mountains and narrow valleys, was ideal terrain for slowing the progress of an invading army. The Germans knew this and had built a series of strong fortifications across the peninsula, the main of which was the Gustav Line. The defences consisted of bunkers, machine gun nests, minefields and artillery emplacements. When the Allies finally reached the Gustav Line in November 1943, they were unable to break through, and the campaign descended into a war of attrition, with both sides using bombing and shelling to inflict casualties on one another. We had these guns, we were the battery SP, self-propelled, it was a uh, uh, yeah. we, wheels at the front, and tracks at the back, and they were called half tracks. They, they were troop carriers, but what they did with some, they put a, uh, a gun in the back, a, a French 75. French 75. That's yeah. right, a, a big one. And we were like our artillery for our own regiment. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And what we had to do when we come, we, had to, we, we got the position of uh, where, where the enemy was, and then they set the guns to everything. And then uh, every morning it altered because they moved, you see. Yeah. And he come over there and then each bloke on the gun yeah. altered his range and, yeah. and direction and everything like that. That's what we had, you know. But I was lucky, I was a wireless operator. We were on the guns, you see. I was lucky, I, I didn't see any, you know, and no, nothing like that because I was, two or three miles back, you know, yeah. you see. But, we, we was, don't get me wrong, we were still under fire, yeah. but it was all shell fire, you know. Yeah, yeah all right. So what was the, what kind of rations did you have when you were in Italy? The same rations we had in Tunis, heart attack. <laughs> were they? But very little. Was it enough to keep someone going it, for a it day? It was enough to keep you going. But now and again, uh, now and again, we used to have the, 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 the Delicacies of having cold beef mm -hmm. and bacon in tins, and uh, it was wrapped round and round and round in silver pa uh, in tissue paper. And when you open the tissue paper, the layers of bacon were there, and it was absolutely gorgeous bacon and the corned beef as well. So, and then of course we did a lot of stealing. <laughs> we had a chicken or two, and eggs or two, and those come from the civilians. Yeah, we went and took them. Okay. We were fighting their wars, and why, why should they have had them? To be fair, you know, we maybe didn't treat them, but we didn't like them. We didn't like the Italian, possibly, because we were there in, and somebody says, well, 
if they don't like us, somebody said, well, would you like somebody that come in to your country and, and uh, <laughs> this is how the usual army stuff comes in and, uh, well, would you like it? Other people come into the country and went shagging with your wife and, and all this and that, you see. And, uh, and, and, and that, 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 that's what we got for a bit at first until they realised they knew which side the bread was buttered. And when we went to any little village, they used to come come and kid, kids used to come out and, and wave flags, you, you know. Because they knew that if they did that, you know, as soon as we started eating, kids come from bloody nowhere as we sat with messy. Joe, 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 Manjari, that's food. Joe Manjari, and he was giving a mess. Well, poor little buggers used to. You get stuck in, and uh, and what they used to ask for was cigarettes. For they, children. Y yes, they didn't smoke. It was for the mothers, for her to go and buy stuff with cigarettes. Yeah, they were, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I, out, out there, they they couldn't get good cigarettes. Well, we we got a tin like that, and it had a sealed top in you. Press the button and that pierced the top, then you did that, lifted the lid up, and there was 50 cigarettes in. And you got one of them a week where we were in Italy, mm -hmm. free, that was what they called free issue. How did the civilians treat you there? Sorry? How did the Italian population treat you? Uh, very well, because they'd they surrendered. They, 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 uh, Mussolini, uh, Mussolini were on the run at that time. Mm -hmm. He hadn't been caught at that time. And uh, what were we going to say? Uh, yeah, yeah they, they took it all right, the mm -hmm. families, you know. But because there were a lot of. It, it, in the, it wasn't like the big cities. Up, up the centre, it were nearly all villages. And they probably were fed up with their sons and what they call it in the war and one thing or another. But we got on all right with the people, you know, in the in the village. Uh, Chilole, that was a lovely place. I'd invited somebody out for tea. A couple of miles off Toronto we were, but we were in winter under canvas. <laughs> but we had blankets and God knows what, you know. We were in tents, you know. But uh, we, we like being there because uh, they, they let us go, they send the wagon full every night. You, you had to sign if you wanted to go in, into Toronto, you know. Mm -hmm. But when we got there, the first time we saw Toronto Harbour, oh, what a mess. Ships were still there and it was the Italian Navy, what they did when the Germans and that were coming, they scuttled their own navy, and you could see ships in, in bloody harbour in, in Toronto, they just, just scuttled them. And in Italy, the rest camp, you, you uh, were two weeks or a week at the rest camp. Mm -hmm. Not very often, but you all took a turn. I think it was two weeks to rest camp we used to go to, we used to, go to Sorrento. Mm -hmm. In January 1944, the Allies tried to bypass the Gustav Line with amphibious landings at Anzio, just south of Rome. However, they could only commit limited numbers of troops to the operation, and once they were ashore, the invaders dug in to defend the beachhead, rather than risk advancing deep inland. But, by the time the Allies had reinforced this position, the Wehrmacht had surrounded them and began launching fierce counterattacks. Over the next few months, both sides suffered heavy losses as they tried and failed to drive each other back. After Anzio, the Allies realized that only direct assaults on the Gustav line could break the stalemate of the campaign. Their efforts were focused on the town of Cassino, which occupied the valley that led to Rome and was one of the key strongholds of the German defences. Above the town 
was the ancient abbey of Monte Cassino, whose elevated position made it a potential observation post for anyone defending the area. The Allies believed that the Germans must have occupied the monastery, and their newsreels reflected likewise. Back at Casino, the fight continued. The Germans held an obvious advantage by their occupation of the Benedictine Abbey above the town. They were asked to abandon it and refused. We had no alternative but to bomb the Abbey to save soldiers' lives. Cassina had no need to be bombed at all because the Germans were not on the Monte Cassino, not prior to the bombing, because the German general was a Catholic. This is what I've learnt later. I mean, I don't know this, it, it, it's not, not been told to me as a single person. It's what I've learnt later that the German general was a Catholic and it wouldn't allow his troops on. But when it got bombed, and all the monks had fled, and all the people that were taking refuge there had fled. There was only all the piles of ruins, all the, so he thought that that's a great opportunity and sent his troops up there. And then it was a tough battle then. It would take four months to break through the defences at Casino, and even then, only with extremely heavy losses. Throughout the Italian campaign, both sides deployed their air forces to support the activities of their armies. See, we were operating over Yugoslavia, that's why we were in the, in the south of Italy. We were operating over there, after shipping us, which is that. Oh, right. We were rocket firing squadron. Oh, right. So they were attacking German shipping, then? Mm. Mm -hmm. Of the Adriatic. Mm -hmm. Would, would, would most of them always come back though, or, or would some would there be? No, some yeah, especially the bombers. You lost a lot of bombers. Mm -hmm. I mean, gee, there was fifty-five and a half thousand men. Bomber command, fifty-five and a half thousand men. Mm -hmm. So I lost all the aircraft as well. On the squadron over all the Yugoslavia, a lot of the pilots were killed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lost all the lads there. There. I think we lost more lads in Italy than what we lost in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. A lot more. Finally, in late May 1944, the Allies captured Casino and breached the Gustav Line, whilst the troops at Anzio broke out of the beachhead. On the 4th of June, Rome was captured, nine months after the initial landings on the mainland. But the liberation of Rome had little impact on the course of the campaign. The German armies avoided encirclement and withdrew further north, where they began constructing new defences to hold back the Allies. Elsewhere, however, the Wehrmacht was about to suffer one of its worst defeats of the war. On the 22nd of June, 1944, the Soviet Union launched Operation Bagration. This was a highly successful offensive on the Eastern Front, which, in just two months, drove the Germans out of Russia altogether and took the Red Army as far as central Poland. Bagration was a cataclysmic defeat for the Wehrmacht. It cost them around 400,000 men, along with vast quantities of equipment, and would eventually lead to them losing control of Eastern Europe. However, no such grand breakthroughs prevailed on the Italian front. The Allies spent the rest of 1944 assaulting the Gothic Line in northern Italy, and although they made some progress, 
they failed to dislodge the Germans. Did you uh, did you feel that the Italian campaign wasn't making much progress? It wasn't making much progress. It was a tough battle everywhere, everywhere we went. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. You see, the Germans were retired. When the Germans were going back, they'd, they'd already made fortifications to go back to. All the time they were going back. Mm -hmm. So, and then, of course, with them going back, they knew the distance between there and us. Mm -hmm. We had to guess the distance between us and them. So their firing was more accurate than ours, mm. and it uh, got a bit close sometimes. As I say, we, we'd be, been abroad uh, uh, oh, two or three weeks, and we were just going like out on patrol, and we were way up. And, and this particular day, this and you know we'd ne never been any problem. This particular day, we went and. Uh, and we were way up, way up, we could see over all the way around, and hill, hills further up, and we stopped at this place, and it was like a a house, a big house, and like a courtyard, mm -hmm. right? And then at that side, there was miles from anywhere, a little church. And you know, and I, I heard some of the lads who'd been before once say, Oh, we're in the right bloody spot here, and they were looking at the hills. In other words, saying they could see us. We were on a hill, but they were higher. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. You right. see, and uh, they were higher than us. And anyway, so this this particular time, so this right, come on, because when we went in, the the we just saw the nuns as they walked, and they just. Bonjour and all, and that was it. They didn't talk to us, you know. They, they just said good morning, and that was it. We we were uh, sat outside. This uh, this house was down there, and then there was a big a big open double door. We were all out there, and, and me and my mate, we we were just stood, and all of a sudden we just heard the whoosh, and then bang, yeah. My ears wrong, and he said, "Come on!" And we ran through this open door, and, and what we did, this passage, we ran along it, and then we went down. And they are, oh, that was it. We, we were running down, and uh, there was all of a sudden a nun come round corner, and she did this. So we just changed direction, and she followed. We followed her, and we went down, and we were about six or seven foot below below the top in the end, and what a big area. And, and we were all in there at the end. In our carrier there was the driver, and then the officer, and me and the other operator. And I was like the second operator, I was just a lad. And uh, anyway, so I, I come, and as we were all going down here, I saw the driver there, I saw the driver there. And, just said, are you all right, Nobby? He said, yeah. And I said, where's Gilly? And that was, his name was Gilchrist. And that was the other, he was the main operator. And he said, he's dead. Yeah. And and that was it. But as I said, my head rung for days after that. And then ever after that, I was never actually in touch with uh, Firing rifles, anything like that, but we were always under uh, bombardment, yes. uh, 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 aerial or, or, or guns, you know. In early April 1945, a new offensive was launched, which broke through the German lines and took the Allies out of the mountains and into the flat terrain of northern Italy where they could finally exploit their superiority in numbers and firepower. Within weeks, the Axis armies had lost control of Italy. Realising that the situation was hopeless, and that their troops had lost most of their fighting strength, the German forces in this region surrendered on the 2nd of May, 1945. The Italian campaign was finally over. Throughout its course, the Allies 
had suffered around 315,000 casualties. Axis losses were even higher. Around 580,000 men had been killed, wounded or captured. Also, 150,000 Italian civilians had died, caught in the fighting between the two sides. I had two or three, well, not buddies, but blokes I knew well in other squadrons who got killed. You see, you know, uh, we trained with them in England, you know, but I'll not say they would be personal friends, don't get me wrong, but we knew them. We knew them, you know, and oh, are they? But we never, we never saw them get killed. I was fortunate being a wireless operator with this artillery at the back. You see these guns. I was lucky. I was lucky, really. Yeah, I think. I think the only persons that really had the danger all the time was the PBI. That's the poor bloody infantry. They, 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 they had the dog work to do, you know, the donkey work, and I, they did it well. Throughout its duration, the Italian front was never a priority for Western Allied resources. Instead, most of their efforts were focused on what would be the final nail in Germany's coffin, the invasion of Normandy. Uh -huh.